Let's see what we look like now. We got it. Turn that down. And what's up, YouTube? How is everybody doing? It is the Sunday Live Show. Coming at you from all over the great state of Tennessee, directly from Knoxville on the east side of things. I want to give a big thank you to everybody hanging out at the show before the show right here in the chat room. But for those of you that are just tuning in for the first time, this is the weekly lawn and garden show. I try to do this every Sunday when time permits, where I take questions from the audience. The format of this show, it's an open format. What I mean by open format is that you ask questions, I provide answers, I do the best that I can with what I'm working with, which is this pea brain talking about things I like to talk about, which indeed include turf grass management. Uh, my background is turf grass management, so that's what I feel most comfortable talking about. I've been a professional applicator for the last 10 years, somehow got into product development and fertilizer manufacturing, and been doing that for the last year or so. Uh, prior to that, I was involved in golf, so that's where I feel most comfortable when we're talking about, indeed, turf grass management. If we are going to talk about subjects outside of turf, I can dabble it a little bit about perennials, a little bit about annuals, a little bit about woody shrubs and ornamentals. However... Here we go. Here we go. But, however, uh, like I said, what I like to talk about most um, in there like swimwear. What up? What I like to talk about most is turf grass management. So, we're going to start moving on with the show here. And we're going to move on to the next segment of the show that I like to call the Roll Call. All right, everybody, let's see who's over here in the painted blue for life. Real quick, look at this. While we're talking about, about uh, uh, L Lushy and Lush Lawns, who is first again, look, look at this hat. Lushy, stop it. This is a one-of-a-kind custom Lush Lawns. Stop it, Lushy, in tow with, with the kick-ass American flag patch right here. And then we've got stop it lushy stop it right across the front i can't i can't even line it up across my head there this is probably the favorite my most favorite thing in a in a hat i have i have ever seen i love it thank you thank you lushy i really appreciate that mr aran and we're gonna move on here over here to second we had dspo coming at you from I believe you're down there in Florida, aren't you, DSPO? I'm just going off memory there. we got the St. Louis Lawn Guru. We're still living in that, reveling in that good time. We had a lawn college down there in Florida. I want to go back. He said, I want to go back. Chris Ward, George Pope, and Matt Anderson, ripping lips, and Mr. L.A. Basso. We got Jared Thurber, all things high. We were tuning in a little bit before the show. We're talking about humans. We were actually talking about human last night, which is the in soluble part of humic substances insoluble parts of humic substances uh, are called humans that's what's left over after they extract the humic acids from linardite shale or peat or whatever their um, uh, source material is for humic acids humic acids are soluble in high ph solutions fulvic acids are sol soluble over wide uh, basically at any ph and then what's left over that's insoluble no matter the ph is human so there we go shane brady in the house the hardest working man in lawn care Lushy was getting in there tap dance around mr nettles how are things going with you good sir we got the lawn strides mr dan the man telly coleman is coming to get to the chopper telly Get to the job. Checking my window over there. I'm scared you're landing in my backyard. I'm hearing noises. Chris Robbins, what's going on? The Hungry Southerner. Mr. NASA himself. <laughs> You've got a new nickname, Mr. NASA. Velvet Hammer dropping hammers. That's what I'm talking about. Coven Carlson made it in. How are you doing, Coven? Welcome aboard. I was stalking you on Facebook earlier. I was doing it with love, though. I was doing it with love. B-Town's Most Wanted. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, B-Town's Most Wanted. What is B-Town? I gotta know. I gotta know what B-Town is. We got Gravy Lookout. Mr. Evan is here. Catbird Feeder all the way from Mississippi. Kate Carter. Uh, Shade for Lawn Care and Property Maintenance is here. Kim Shields. Glad you're here. 
Uh, let's see here. Jeremy Swatkins. That's what I'm talking about. Richard Freeman is here. Brandon Davis. That's B R W A N D O N. Those of you that are wondering, I'm going to spell that for you. The Lawn Care Addicts, T L C A. Mr. Mickles. This is not. That's funny, though. And John Teague is here. BB Camillo, Sun 99. The Lawn Fix, woo, Gaytree Landscaping all the way from Michigan. What's going on, good sir? Robert Butler, Jeremy DeBoss. All right, y'all, we're going to get into the show here because I see some questions coming in. So, again, I just want to stress this. Now is the time to go ahead and put your questions in the queue. Um, I will follow down the chat and answer the questions as I come across them. Bear with me. It may take me 10 minutes to answer one question. It may take me 10 seconds to answer the next question. If I do not catch it on the first time, feel free to ask it again, and I will get to it. I am fallible. I make mistakes. I'm going to answer some of these questions wrong. I will make mistakes when I'm trying to guide you and teaching you how uh, to move through these problems. You may you may, um, may ask through your questions. So just know that, that there is a big caveat to this whole thing. I am fallible. I'm human. I make mistakes. So... We're going to kick this off with the question from Mr. Robert Butler here. Hey, Matt, I've been using Thiophanate, Methyl 4.5, and and Azoxy Mix for dollar spot, leaf spot, brown patch. I'm due again and feel I should rotate now with something else. What would be a good choice? Well, here's the deal, Robert Butler. You don't really have a whole lot of um, options to rotate to, right? So um, Thiophanate Methyl, also known as... No, thiophanate methyl would be um, Cleary's 3336, I believe, uh, and Azoxy. So what you would want to rotate to would be uh, a DMI like um, Myclobutanil, also known as Eagle, or Propiconazole, also known as Banner Max. Uh, that would be your next in rotation. However, you can look at uh, rotation... Uh, TennesseeTurfGrassWeeds.com. No, that's more for weed control. I do not think they have fungicide on there for rotation. So um, we will. Yeah, I think that's what you'll be left with is propiconazole type type deal. Do that or there. All right, let's see what we can go on to the next question here. How do you cure a necrotic ring spot? Well, that's a good question, Marshall. And here's the reality of it is that you probably can't. <laughs> Um, you know, it's one of those things that once it's there, it's going to continue to be a problem until the conditions become less favorable for it. So once you have a, uh, a good fertility program in place, just make sure it's as robust and complete as possible, um, to fight those kinds of, um, uh, to fight the probability of it, uh, having a lasting effect, right? So once it comes in, does its thing, you know, how quickly can you get it to recover from it? I do believe, um, the fungicide propiconazole actually does show some efficacy on necrotic ring spot. And to be honest, I'm not the most versed in it because I've never really had to deal with it. And that's just not something we face down here in the South where I am. But I do know guys up in like Colorado do have to deal with it. And a lot of what they try and do is drive root depth. So I've heard of people using things that contain like humic acids and sea kelp um, to drive root depth. And ultimately it ends up kind of correcting itself. Again, I'm not going to go super down that road because that's just hearsay and nothing I've ever experienced. My best guess, just kind of off the top of my head here, um, would be I would start with propiconazole. Steve Darcy, what's going on, good sir? Good to see you here. What's up from Bama? Hey, man. Anything I can do in the lawn to deter snakes? American Troy, I do not know where you live. I do not know what kind of turf you have, but... I will say this. One thing I noticed when I was in Augusta, Georgia, I was actually spraying um, a sulfur product on uh, on a lawn one time. And I'm trying to remember what it was. I want to say it was it was like a Roots, uh, Lebanon Turf Roots 336, three, something like that. And I remember it, it's got a lot of iron in it from, from ferrous sulfate, but it had this odd like sulfury smell to it and real low pH. And, uh, and anyway, I was spraying and I knew when I, when I came across a, a snake because they would always, uh, uh, run away from it really, really quickly. So I'm going to guess that anything that's really low pH or, um, uh, or sulfated is not going to feel good on a snake. So I'd probably start there. Just, 
I'm just I'm just kind of kind of throwing darts at the dartboard there. Uh, you know, br- repelling repelling insect or uh, pr- repelling reptiles hasn't really been a big part of my job. I've been more into like killing weeds and stuff. Does molasses or dethatch help to get to help or work to get rid of cool season seed stalks, mainly PRG seed stalks? Uh no, uh, probably not. So if you're dealing with perennial ryegrass seed stalks, you know, that's just going to be a natural process of dealing with perennial ryegrass. Um, if you can get it cut low enough to get it to um, you know, fall into the canopy, then something like molasses may help digest that. But as far as actually taking it off the plant, no, it's not going to work like that. Just apply crossbow and sedge hammer to the lawn for nut sedge and a ton of woody weeds and vines and landscape. When can I expect this cocktail to smoke the weeds? Um, I would say realistically, probably two to three weeks, somewhere in there. Sedge hammer is exceptionally slow, so that can be anywhere in that 21 to 28 day range. However, when you add in the crossbow, which has a little bit of 2,4-D in it, it may 2,4-D in it, it may speed up the effects of the house of furon in sedge hammer. Um, so, as a general rule of thumb, anytime you make an herbicide application, two to three weeks is about when you should see something happening. If it's hot enough outside, it may happen faster, but again, just save yourself the headache and the stress. Give it two to three weeks and then evaluate. Literally just came back from Florida, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, turf type tall fescue here in New England, how best to get rid of creeping bent grass? So, pool man, there are two options on uh, the market right now, and I will say there are not a ton of... Surefire, 100%. This is always going to work. Options out there, but uh, for turf type tall fescue, you have Pylex and you also have Tenacity. Uh, probably combining the two would be your best bet. However, just understand that it's going to require repeat applications. I've seen guys up your way, maybe not New England, but in the Midwest, Ohio area, um, that have had lackluster results with Tenacity and lackluster results with Pylex, and then went with glyphosate, and it came back after the glyphosate app. So uh, what I'm saying is that you may be in for a world of pain trying to get rid of it, but be persistent. Persistence is key. It's like trying to control Bermuda grass. You have to be persistent. You have to be diligent. You have to stay on top of it in order to make sure you can actually get it out of there. Jeremy DeMoss, go Vols, sir. Go Vols. I got hats. X Green CX, I'm your one-stop (laughs) shop. Nick Polio, glad you're here, sir. Welcome to the show. To the show. Justin L. Matt, mushrooms in the lawn. What does this mean? Good, bad. I have sandy soil in Minnesota. I don't get over an inch of water a week unless it rains. Justin, this is exactly what it means. It means is that you have ideal conditions uh, for mushrooms to grow. Okay, so you have to remember a mushroom is a fungi, right? So you need appropriate host, temperature, and moisture. That means you have some kind of organic matter host that's in your soil that's allowing it to come up. Is it in a circular pattern? If it's in a circular pattern, those particular types of mushrooms are called fairy rings. What does that mean? That means you have a fairy ring in your lawn. It's just a patch of mushrooms. Some people can attribute that depending on the type of fairy ring you have. There's multiple types of fairy rings. Um, if you have like actually like death that, that occurs in it, um, then what a lot of people will, will notice is that that's hydrophobic soil where that's begin to repel water and people will aerate it like fire and apply like a uh, soil penetrant to try and get it to uh, begin to, to take back in moisture. So um, that may not be what you have going on, but just kind of a general rule of thumb, uh, you have organic matter in your soil and you have appropriate temperature and appropriate moisture. Um, some people are worried about like dogs or dogs going to eat it. Is it going to hurt the dogs? No, generally dogs are going to stay away from it. Uh, and the easiest way to get rid of it would probably be just to run over it with a mower or just kick it over. Um, no amount of fungicide in the world is going to really do anything for mushrooms. Um, if anybody tells you to apply a fungicide to solve an issue with mushrooms, run uh, don't walk, run away from that because that is very, very poor advice. Do not do that. Some Beach 35, welcome to start. Some Beach. <laughs> Beat Town is Bradenton here. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, surprise, surprise, Glenn Stevens. What are you doing? North Florida, why am I having lots of little weeds shoot up now that the drought is over? Should I put down pre emergent next midsummer? No. Not necessarily. Rodney's alone time. Let me tell you what's probably happening. So you went into a period of drought. Now that you're getting rain, guess what? Not pre-emergence are not going to stop all weeds in the lawn. They're only going to target very 
um, uh, specific growth patterns and actual seed types, right? So, and the way they work in particular, so I'm guessing you use a, a DN. Uh, a, a D-nitrile inhibitor, a DNI, a D-nitrile inhibitor. And the way that's going to work is that is through you know mitosis as that uh, cell begins to elongate to send off a feeder root from the seed to tack down into the soil. It will nub it and prevent, that vapor bear, bear will prevent it from tacking down. Some seeds just aren't affected the same way that like a perennial grass would be, like tall fescue, for instance, you know, pre-emergence are going to do a decent job of affecting that seed. Or we'll look at it from an even smaller seed, a smaller seed like Bermuda grass seed. Prodiamine is going to do a very effective job at that small seed of being able to keep it from tacking down because there's not a lot of stored energy in that seed. So smaller seeds tend to be stopped a little bit easier just because of the amount of energy that's stored in the seed. So in particular with pre-emergence, what you're looking at is that it does a very good job of preventing things like crabgrass, tiny seed, right? If you're having little weeds shoot up now that the drought is over, if I had to guess, a lot of those are going to be coming from like tree saplings. It could be from like buttonweed, things that just had a chance to accumulate while uh, there was no real rainfall. Now you got some rainfall and it's starting to come up. That's just the way it goes. So have a good post-emergent program in your back pocket to be ready for when this happens in the future. Paul Manicone asks, hey, Matt, the heat turned my turf type tall fescue in straw. Renovating in fall, how do I get old dead grass up to ensure good seed soil contact? Tilling slit cedar or top dressed entire lawn with topsoil. Paul, I think you're way overthinking it, man. I think you're way overthinking it. Um, so you can ensure good seed soil contact just about any way you want to do it. Do you have to till it? No. Do you have to slit seed it? No. Do you have to top dress the entire lawn with topsoil? Absolutely not. An easy thing to do, I'll tell you a real easy thing to do, is to get a piece of chain link fence. And if you got a riding mower, hook it behind your riding mower. Put down your seed right over your yard, including the grass, uh, with your uh, chain link fence. It will work that seed down into contact with the soil. Don't overthink it. Don't make it more difficult than it has to be. In fact, you don't even have to do that. You go out just broadcast seed and water it and it's going to come up. Don't over overcomplicate it because what will happen is that any kind of mistake you, you face... Um, it will uh, it'll put you down. And let me tell you, when you put that amount of effort into it, where you're talking about tilling and spending that much money, top dressing the whole thing with topsoil, and you get any sort of failure, it just seems much more aggressive of a failure than it actually is. So I wouldn't do any of that. I'd just broadcast it, run a run a, a, a drag mat over it, and call it good. Just run with it. So savvy test show 40 phosphorus. How long will it take to come down? Uh, Matt Davis, it could take years for it to come down. It really depends on what you do uh, outside of that. So if you stopped applying phosphorus and you started bagging your clippings, for every four pounds of nitrogen you apply through the course of the year, you could pull about a pound of phosphorus uh, out of your soil. Um, so the rate of phosphorus exhaustion from your turf grass is going to be dictated by the amount of nitrogen you apply. So the more nitrogen you apply without applying phosphorus, the more phosphorus you can pull from the soil. And you can also increase that. So you could maybe, maybe double the amount you pull from the soil if you also bag your clippings. But remember, you're only going to pull as much phosphorus from the soil as, uh, as dictated by how much nitrogen you apply assuming you do not apply any additional phosphorus. Okay, well, we jumped down to the bottom. Let me come on up. Woo! Let's see. I am, uh, Matt, I'm seeding. Whoa, hey. Oh, look at, hang on one second here. Uh, future former lawn news is, I came home from a week-long work trip with some torpedo grass invading. Time for some quinclorac? Absolutely. With Bermuda grass, quinclorac is going to be your best friend. Can you discuss the different forms of chelation? RVA lawn love? Yes, I can, but really that's a whole long video in and of itself. Um, so what chelation does basically it means it wraps the um, the nutrient molecules. So, and typically these are going to be metals, right? So iron, manganese, um zinc copper um and it will it and chelation is greek for for claw right it forms this structure like holds on to this this metal ion and 
and keeps it soluble in liquid for a longer period of time because what happens with these metal ions is that they can oxidize. So they'll bond with an oxygen ion. And then once it bonds with that oxygen ion, it's no longer soluble in water. Therefore, the plant cannot use it unless it goes through a very energy intensive process where the plant has to give up some in order to break that oxide bond in order to be able to use it. So what chelation does is that it actually helps these uh, metallic ions stay in solution for a longer period of time to have a higher chance of success of being able to be taken up by the plant. Um, different chelation formulations are going to allow for um, solubility across a wider range of pHs. So EDTA uh, chelation may give you up to a seven citric acid chelation, so ferrous citrate. Um, may give you up to a pH of 6 uh, of staying soluble. Um, uh, let's see, what would be another one? Uh, what is one green dot used in feature? ED, ED, EDPHA is going to give you solubility up to like an 8 uh, on the pH scale for higher uptake. So hope that answers that question. The Hungry Southern says, Matt, I'm seeing the turf type tall fescue in my neighbor's lawn. Does it make uh, sense to hold back some pounds and reseed it 14 days to make sure I've got good seeding coverage? I know it's not alpha grass. That's right. Um, it could be, but I would probably, you, there would be so little, you know, if you do have to hold some back, yeah, hold back like five pounds. And, and remember, you know, choose a good turf type tall fescue seed variety and remember, don't overdo it. Have a little bit of spacing in between your seeds. You don't want piles and piles and piles of seed on top of seed, right? So what I would do is I would go out, say the recommended rate for new establishments, eight pounds per thousand, go out at seven pounds per thousand, pocket you a little bit, and any any kind of small areas you have, get your garden weasel out there, agitate it, and, and do a couple of uh, some, some salt-based sprinkles with it in there. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. That was horrible. Um, so anyway... Uh, yeah, that would, uh, that would be my recommendation. Yeah, you're right. Hold some back and, you know, do some touch up, but remember, just take it easy with the seed. Don't overdo it. Um, I do not know, uh, the lawn care addicts, what the carbon X spreader setting is on the LC 1000. Um, I will look into it and see if I can get you that data off the top of my head. I do not know. Uh, what are you talking about? Glenn Stevens, 14.3. Surprise, surprise, 14.3. Propiconazole. That's probably what it is. Green Kalinga in the dead heat of summer Bermuda lawn. What do you suggest? Wait. Uh, no, I suggest getting after it now, especially in Bermuda grass. So um, for something like Kalinga, Solero is going to do what do well. Amazosulfuron. You can use Certainty, Sulfosulfuron. You can use Monument, uh, Trifloxysulfuron. You can use Katana, Flazosulfuron. Um, there's lots of options out there. You can surely get after it for the salt bag. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Uh, how do you remedy overcrowding turf type tall fescue? So probably what I would do is I would go after it with um, like a slit seeder, run a slit seeder, but don't drop any seed on the ground uh, or a power rake. Um, that would be a good step or don't do anything and let the heat kind of let natural selection take place. Um, a lot of people overcrowd their turf type tall fescue. I'd say that contributes to up to 50% of the problems I see on tall fescue, especially renovated tall fescue. Everybody overdoes the seed. So um, what I would do is uh, power rake it. Yep. Thin it out. What should I start to prep seed this fall up in the Minneapolis area? I want to give the grass enough time to get established. Um, when should I start? Uh, you could probably, you could probably start right now. You're in Minneapolis. So yeah, yeah. Get out, get out there, get after it. Remember it's never too early. It's just too early if you can't keep up with the watering. Uh, renovating my lawn to turf type tall fescue this fall. Got a product that is 50%. You, so you got you some Miramichi Green. Recommends 20 to 40 pounds per M. Do you think this rate is too high for seed establishment? Uh, no, because, um, the, uh, no, you can do that. Uh, post-emergent crabgrass control in centipede. Uh, you could do Pilex. Um, you could do Cethoxidem, post. Um, you could do Atrazine. All of those would work. Uh, with a turtite tall fescue lawn that's dormant from heat and lack of water in California, what should be my game plan? Leave it alone. 
leave it alone until temperatures permit you to begin doing something with it. Do not cut it either. There's no point in cutting it. Uh, what I would do is I would just chalk this up as a vacation and, and take it off until temperatures start to cool. And as it does, get you some fertilizer down and get back after it and get it ready for next summer. Um, Matt, I've got some shrubs that are showing signs of chlorosis. What's the best way to fix this problem? I have feature on hand, but I'm open to other options. Uh, that would be a great uh, product to use would be feature, right? So again, back to chelated liquid. It's going to be soluble in a wide variety of pHs. You can go ahead and make that application. It'll be readily available to the plant and be taken up and solve it. However, what you have to make sure is that is the chlorosis a symptom of being iron deficient? So if it's being if it's showing chlorotic symptoms, but it's not iron deficient, then that feature will probably not solve that issue, and you'll have to go back to the drawing board as to what's actually causing it. Can I use liquid aeration when temps have been hot? Uh, yeah, I don't see any problems. Just make sure you water it after you use it. Um, how many apps of the same combo of thiophenate methyl and azoxy do you think is pushing it? It's been working, so I hate to switch, but guessing I should. Was looking at Romana, but it also has a group 11. Um, it, I don't know. Nobody knows what that answer is. Nobody can tell you what that is. Um, the problem is, is that there's just not a lot of um, options out there for you to be able to switch to. So, I don't know. You could apply it 150 times in a row and never have any issue with it. You could apply it twice in a row and develop resistance. So, really, it's just all up to the genetics of the plant, to uh, the genetics of the disease, to be able to adapt to those sites of actions that come from group three and group 11 or group four, group 11, whichever they are. Um, hello from Ohio. What's going on, man? Is it okay to apply dismiss for sedge this time of year? Uh, Joseph Rotina, I have no idea what your turf type is, but I'm going to guess and say yes. Um, just apply it during the time of day where you're not over your temperature restriction. I just put the pro sedge in my acre of Bermuda, spot spray with four gallons. Forgot to use the surfactant. Crap, hope it works. It will, but you'll probably have some breakthrough. Just be ready for that and having to do some touch-ups. What is the most yards you took care of in one season? Uh, when I was at Fairway Lawns, I ran a route that had over 810 lawns in a route. So 810 lawns in a route at eight applications. So what is that, 6,400 applications in a season or something I did? Something like that? Um, yeah, probably something like that. Let's see, stupid question. Let's not start out like that, Nick Polio. But I'm renovating several lawns this year with Kentucky bluegrass and a pruning ryegrass one-on-one -one by weight. Will the Kentucky bluegrass eventually dominate this turf sand? Thank you. In theory, Nick, yes, it will. However, in practicality and in all forms and purposes, just, just be prepared. What's going to end up happening is that you'll get this patching that occurs. It won't be uniformly distributed. You'll get a patch of perennial ryegrass that'll perform, and then a patch of Kentucky bluegrass. However, for establishment, I think that's a good thing. And then as you need to introduce, continue to introduce that seed mix one-to-one -one weight um, back, back into the lawns is in the event you need to overseed or you see this patching take place, see that into it. Or... Um, or just go with one or the other. So say, for instance, they're becoming extremely Kentucky bluegrass dominant and you want to get some perennial ryegrass in there, just seed perennial ryegrass into it, for instance. But definitely not a stupid question. That's that's actually a great question because what people don't realize is that for three years, it'll look great and uniform. And then year number four, you'll get huge patches of Kentucky, Kentucky bluegrass, monostan, and then huge patches of monostan, um, perennial ryegrass. It just happens. Are the next products the best products out there, including your Carbon X, Popo, and Sun Lawn Care? Man, uh, well, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make this clear right here, Popo and Sun Lawn Care. Um, there are no best products that are out there, and and a, a, everything is a tool in a toolbox, right? So what you have is you have this big pie, and this big pie is a program, right? And there's a million different things you can put into this program that are all going to get the exact same result. So it doesn't matter if you're using Carbon X, you're using RGS, you're using this, you're using that, you're using that and that. I can I, I, I built my business off running primarily MPK for years. I didn't start introducing organics into my programs until four years ago. And I was growing great grass before I even used organics in, in, my, in my program. So I have a whole degree... Oh, Alan, no, oh, no, sir. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I need beats for this preacher. I learned from the best, Alan. I learned from the best. 
Um, so this is in, 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 you know, you could grow grass with any kind of program you want, right? So, you know, your, your products are just all about, you know, what kind of support do you have the product to be able to understand where to use it? It just, it just comes down to preference, man. Everything is a tool in the toolbox, Popo and Son. So, you know, we look... <laughs> We, we, we look at CarbonX. My whole goal behind CarbonX was for a pro applicator that used a ride-on machine that needed more tank space to be able to spray weed controls, right? That was so my solution for my problem I was facing was, was CarbonX. For the homeowner, that, that may not be the case, right? Because the homeowner may say, I want to spray my yard every week whether it needs it or not. And that'd be a good thing for them to get out there with their bio-stem pack and just get after it and have a good time, you know? So... Um, it, it all you know, fits into you, people have different expectations and interpretations and, and goals for their lawn and everything's a tool in the toolbox. So um, uh, uh, that uh, I can't that's going to be the best way I can answer that question. Completed my renovation last fall. Turf type tall fescue here in central North Carolina trying to cut back on POA annual next spring. Overseeding in September, spraying tenacity at seed down and then dithy appear. Any thoughts? Uh, I think that's a good option. Or um, you could replace that tenacity with, uh, with or no, you could do tenacity and then followed by progress. Progress or, um, um, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank on what progress is. At the fumicate. At the fumicate is designed as a post emergent. Um, we control against POA annua and it also has. Um, it also has a uh, uh, pre-emergent activity on POA annual as well. So if you're, if you're, if you're hard into it, then I would, I would look at doing that. Tenacity plus Dithy appear is fine, but I would argue that tenacity followed by, um, progress would be like that next step up, taking it to the next level. Hey Matt, looking at options for a reno, I have read that Compadre Zorgia is bred to blend with turf type tall fescue. Have you seen this done? When I spray out the fescue in the spring, like Bermuda and rye, uh, I have never heard that. Um, Jameson Murphy, I know Compadre Zorgia is one of the seeded varieties, so I do not. <laughs> Yeah, man, I do not know. I honestly do not. I have to do some rating on that. I, would you please send me an email at thegrassfactor at gmail.com? While I'm doing that, for those of you that don't know, let me tell you, if you'd like to hang out in the show before the show or the show after the show, and I'm not talking about everything is here necessarily on the live stream, but you can hop on over to lawndiscord.com, thelawndiscord.com, where it is a group of recovering uh, once cool in high school, but now are middle-aged men trying to find their way in life. Uh, but there's a couple of women over there. There's a couple of women over there. But you can come out, hang out over at thelawndiscord.com. It's a private server. Lots of tech guys. Lots of engineers. Um, we got we got a we got a couple of tradesmen in there. There's no welders. If you're a welder, please come join. I want to hang out with some welders. You know what I'm saying? And we got guys from all over the United States. We got gals all the way from uh, the other side of the world, as a matter of fact. So, if you'd like to hang out there, you can, by all means, lawndiscord.com. Or if you'd like to send me an email, it's going to take me a while to get to emails. I'm telling you right now, I just looked at my inbox before I went live, and I am behind on 76 emails right now. I get to them, it just takes me a long time because I'm getting more and more and more every day. So, just bear with me. I will get to them eventually. Or you can find me on Instagram if you want to see a little bit about uh, what my life is like behind the scenes uh, with me and my family hanging out. That's kind of where I live my personal life is on Instagram or at thelawnforum.com. I do not actively participate a whole lot in the lawn forum. However, I do lurk pretty aggressively. Uh, I do not participate there because there's not really anything I need to participate over. Those guys know what they are doing, and I'm not going to be able to offer a whole lot of help in that regard. So if you'd like to get a hold of me, you can do so anything in, in any of those places there or feel free to hit that subscribe button right now. Uh, subscribers, that's what tells me to know to keep doing this. And I know, I know. And for the guy that was asking about subscriber counts last week, I'll answer you this. I'm a very small YouTuber compared to, you know, my my friend, Mr. Alan Hain, Mr. Denny, Mr. Ryan Knorr, um, uh, Mr. Ward. I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys and I'll never be one of those guys because... You have to remember, my niche is talking about the science behind turf grass management. So Super TA, like, like we were talking about, 
I am hyper focused on on more about applied science and almost I'd say like a theory behind lawn care than I am actually telling people how to go out and get things done. So I'm going to tell you the science behind how to make something happen in the lawn, but ultimately it's your decision on how to go make that happen. So that's why I will never be a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube because nobody really can. You have to be highly dedicated to want to watch what I talk about on YouTube. That's all I'm saying. All right. Now back to the show. Okay. Hey Matt, looking at, uh, okay. So that is with the Capadre Zorgia. If you hand pull crabgrass, can it regrow from roots? Uh, yes, it's potential. If you do not get all the roots, absolutely it can. That's just building up to three quarter to one inch. Any issues with power rake in Bermuda with high temps and no rainfall in sight? Should I hold off and wait for better conditions or just irrigate to help it recover? I would personally wait for rain in the forecast and then go hardcore with it. However, if you're looking to rip out some of the rain, remaining St. Augustine, eh, I mean, you could do it. Just, you know, water it good and and uh, and spoon feed it back to life, right? Because you're going to stress the fire out of it. Um, so, yeah. You can, personally, I would hold off until you had better conditions. Um, but, yeah, I think I think you'll be fine either way. What's going on, Mr. Dogan? How are you good, sir? Uh, yeah, my, I got, not this side, but I had a lower tooth pulled over here. I grind my teeth really bad, and I had to have surgery. Uh, this last week to have a teeth removed that I had fractured into tons and tons of pieces. I used to wear a night guard. Um, however, every time I wear a night guard, even the ones that come direct from my dentist that cost $600, I grind it into a powder uh, within a day, sometimes two days. I think the longest I've had one lasts is about a week. But literally, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm choking on this uh, rubber mouth guard or this hard plastic mouth guard that I've turned into a powder. So I had a tooth, another tooth, my fourth surgically extracted uh, last week. So a little bit on recovery from that. Uh, let's see. To get rid of Bermuda grass and tall fescue, I had good success with Fusillet 2 and Turflon Ester. Uh, I live in Missouri. That's a good one. And actually, um, I just got a text from Pete Denny a little while ago who said uh, he was having good success with um, uh, Tenacity and... No, not Tenacity. With Fusillet with over the top and acclaim. Acclaim is often overlooked. It's in the same family as Fusillade 2. Uh, Phenoxapop, Fusillade is Fluazapop. Same mode of action. Um, so combining those two would be a really whoo kind of deal there. Uh, what would you say is too early to aerate a cool season lawn? Uh, it's too early to aerate a cool season lawn if you can't keep up with the watering after the fact, right? So it can handle it and hire... Oh, no, let me rephrase that, J. Pink. It, I'm I'm way off base there. If you were over the genetic limit of the growing conditions of the plant, right? So you got to think cool season lawns. It's going to prefer temperatures under 85. So if you're at a cooling trend of 85 during the day, peak and cooling uh, with your extended forecast, then you're okay there. Too early would be like if you're going to be 85 this week, 95 next week, and you plan on aerating now, you're going to create an extremely, extremely dry soil situation by doing that. If you had unlimited amount of money, what's the best type of fast-release nitrogen and slow-release nitrogen? This is a great question, John Cruz, because let me tell you exactly how to answer this. Nitrogen is nitrogen is nitrogen is nitrogen is nitrogen. Again, it all comes back to the tool in the toolbox, right? So, for instance, Lutar, we'll just look just real quick at a, at a sneak peek with, with cool season grass. And this is like a program I used to run, right? I would run ammonium sulfate, quick release in the fall. I would run ammonium sulfate, quick release in the fall. I would run ammonium sulfate, quick release in the small in the fall. Three apps of it. In the spring, I would run ammonium sulfate. And then again in the spring, I would run ammonium sulfate. All quick release, no slow release, had fantastic lawns. I did it that way. I've done it with methylene urea. So you go out there with Mesa, homogenized methylene urea and ammonium sulfate, right? Lebanon turf, supposedly the best of the best, right? And I can grow the same kind of grass with that. It all depends on how you structure your program, right? And and what your timing interval is between each application. It's not that any form of nitrogen is going to be better than the other. 
they all work the same, right? This is what's going to be the most efficient when you apply it. I like ammonium sulfate because it's ammoniacal nitrogen. It's readily available, right? There's no, there's no, not that huge conversion process that has to take between the reaction of urea and uh, the enzyme urease in order to convert into NH3 and CO2, which is you know ammonia and CH2. So it doesn't have to go from a solid to a gas in order to become plant available. Um, so I like um, ammonium sulfate. So you have your ammoniacal uh, nitrogen. Plus you get sulfate, which is also a nutrient. And the big case for sulfur right now as a plant nutrient is that one, it's taken in at extremely high rates by the plant and it plays a role in photosynthesis. So it alone can give you a color response. And uh, two, it also has disease fighting potential. That's not steadfast and in stone, but for things like take all patch and uh, St. Augustine has shown good efficacy there. Um, and uh, and it's you know relatively cost effective in that regard. Uh, there is a time and place for something like Mesa fertilizer. So there are some people that want to go out real heavy on the front end and get all their nitrogen down and let that those uh, urea formaldehyde chains on the back end break down over time. And so they can go out with more soil conditioners through the course of the summer. So it just depends on how you want to do it. There isn't a better or best or worst or whatever. Um, it just, what are your goals? What are you trying to do? And how do those nitrogen sources fit into that? Berenberg rhizomatous tall fescue. Can I get your thoughts on it? I used it on this renovation last year and I can't get dark color out of it. I don't know a whole lot about Berenberg RTF, but I can say from Mountain View seed, I never had any issues. Mountain View seed rhizomatous tall fescue look great. Um, and it's extremely dark. The one thing I do know about Berenberg is that they make the uh, bluegrass HGT, healthy growth technology, healthy growth technology. And it is known for being a lime, lime, lime green Kentucky bluegrass. So that's the only um, correlation I can draw there. Hello, goosegrass is taken over by Bermuda, says Heather Sal. What should I zap it with? San Antonio, Texas has around 98 each day. Can I put down any pre-emergence for it next year? Yes, um, the only pre-emergent you're going to have left that works is Spectacle. And what I would put down for it now would be Syncor or Pilex. Those two are going to be extremely effective on um, your goosegrass. Over the last few years, my yard develops areas that almost look purple during late summer. Huh. Up close, blades look almost like they've been burned. It's only a few few blades in a spot, not an entire area. Um, WXY is true. Um, I do not know. Can you send me pictures? Also, if you have a soil test, please send a soil test, and that will help paint a more accurate picture. Fescue, do I have to keep putting down fungicide all summer? Picked up a disease and pretty much knocked it out altering prop and disease eggs. Do I go back to prevent rate every two weeks? You can if conditions are still favorable for it. So if you pick up a disease, what's important is that learn the attributes of that disease, right? So that's the, when you decide to put down that fungicide, you know, identify your disease first, learn the attributes of that disease. And as long as you're in the, the conditions that are favorable for the development of that disease, then yeah, it makes sense to do that. But if you're moving into a period where it would just not even make sense for that disease to develop at all. So for instance, you get leaf spot in April or Hel Helminthosporium in April, you know, where there's just no sun and you got 10 days of rain in a row and you're just putting fungicide out two weeks from that point straight through summer, straight into fall. When do you stop? So Helminthosporium, once it gets to be 85 degrees outside, is no longer going to be active. So you, at that point, you can stop doing it. Uh, so learn the attributes of your disease and make your fungicide applications based on preventing what those could look like. Uh, hey, Matt, in New Jersey and looking to overseed. In the past, stuck to Kentucky bluegrass on a yard with four to five hours light, then shade. In the past, stuck to Kentucky bluegrass on a yard before and then shade. Okay, am I being silly sticking with Kentucky bluegrass to just oversee turf type tall fescue and have a mix of the two? I don't know, man. So I don't deal a whole lot with Kentucky bluegrass, but if you're only dealing with four to five hours of light, then I would probably make the switch to turf type tall fescue. And just just thinking about it there, I mean, even four to five hours of, of, of light for turf type tall fescue is beginning to cut it pretty close. So I can imagine Kentucky bluegrass would even have an even uh, harder time, harder struggle with that. Uh, Rich Proto says, "How can you talk a little bit about how biochar and carbon contribute to the soil development, especially sandy soil, low CEC?" Sure. Okay. So 
biochar and particularly carbon. So in this instance, I'm going to talk about fixed carbon, not necessarily total carbon, fixed carbon. That would be the carbon that's in biochar. Fixed carbon uh, is a very light, very porous, uh, and it has an extremely high CEC. So it being that it is carbon with its molecular structure, it is able to bond to cations uh, relatively easily, really easily. So um, biochar, when you introduce it to a sandy soil below CEC, it all of a sudden has all these sites that can bond to all these cations, right? Um, and that's just due to the molecular structure of the carbon chain, right? Um, and then the other part of that is going to be the extremely high porosity, right? So high porosity into something that is, um, uh, I'd, I'd say much more dense porosity than something that would be, um, you know, free flowing like sand, right? So imagine if sand is like marbles, biochar would be like closer to sand. And if you poured water through each of them, it would move through the marbles really quickly, whereas it would move through the sand relatively slowly because the surface tension of the water isn't going to flow to those pore spaces as quickly through the biochar as it would through the sand. So um, that's how it would contribute to it. And then there's an organic matter component too that typically goes into something like carbon X. And so you have the biochar that would act as the, the housing and the stimulation for the microbes that would speed up the release of the organic matter component and then still have that ability to um, retain those cations through the release of the mineralization of that organic matter and the synthetics that are also in the carbon X. I hope that answers that question. <laughs> That's funny, Toby. Uh, will x ray be available to homeowners? Yes, it will. And as a matter of fact, for those of you that are uh, wondering about that, it is coming sooner than later. And if you would like to learn more about that, I will tell you exactly how to learn more about that. And that is, check us out on our website. And you can go over here to the products and I have a new updated label on the website. So I'm gonna throw that link into the chat right here. And it is coming to the DIY market. We're gonna be doing a limited release. Alan has sunk just a ton of time and money into this. And so, uh, you know, we're kind of uh, putting the responsibility on him. So Alan uh, is going to be bringing it to the DIY market. And uh, and so, yeah, we will we will answer as he sees fit. We're gonna do the best we can to uh, to make it as seamless as possible because he has been just a complete and total workhorse behind it. Uh, without him, you know, there's no way we would have been able to do it. So big, big ups to big out. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's see. Where am I? Hey, don't overcomplicate it. Right. <laughs> Matt, what can I do to make my turf type tall Bermuda look better? I don't know, John. Where I, I don't I don't even know where to start. Maybe you could tr try dropping it. You could drop it. Drop your high to cut. To me, it looked fine in your video. I mean, I just, I didn't, I didn't really see anything within your video where I was even worried about it, John Ware. I was like, hey, that's a, that's a good looking yard right there. And he got it taken care of right there in the ditch. That's what I'm saying. How will this do, how will this post do? Quinclorac per gallon tenacity at four ounces per acre, one point. Okay, so we got, let's see, we got 64 ounces per acre and four ounces per acre. Or Carfenter Zone plus 2DQ plus NIS. Uh, Quinclorac and Tenacity will do a heck of a lot better on crabgrass if that's what you're going after. I don't know what you're going after. High hydrogen levels in soil centipede doesn't grow well. Do I need to correct it? And how? pH 5.5. So hydrogen ions in the soil in high concentration just means you have a low pH. Um, centipede not growing well probably has nothing to do with your hydrogen levels in the soil. Uh, it could be high phosphorus levels in the soil. It could be high chloride in the soil. Uh, it could be not enough sulfur in the soil. It could be too low potassium in the soil. There's lots of reasons. It could just be too much clay content. Centipede is not a big fan of clay. You can try and convince me otherwise, but it's just not. There's lots of things that can make centipede not grow well on soil. Hydrogen levels typically aren't it because the pH of 5.5 is ideal for centipede. 
Hey man, I just seeded my brand new lawn. What would your recommendation for keeping it watered? I don't know what kind of seed you put down, but I'm going to say right now it's just kind of a random number to throw out there. This is a dart to the dartboard right here, my friend. Uh, it is it's going to be running four times a day at four minutes a zone, and that's going to come on at 3 a.m., 7 a.m., 11, uh, 3 a.m. No, I'm sorry. It's going to come on at 7 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7 p.m. That's going to be my watering schedule for you. And it's going to run four to six minutes a zone, depending on how much water you're actually getting out. Uh, and that's just a complete total dart at a dartboard guess right there. Do you have to top dress after aeration in low cut Bermuda? I know golf courses do their greens, but talk to a super today and he said they didn't top dress fairways after aeration. No, they don't because that would just be a lot of work. And typically they're not, um, they're not, uh, they're just trying to reduce the amount of localized dry spot on a fairway. They have to with golf courses because part of that management of the of the, of the golf green is reducing um, any kind of organic matter layer, right? Because organic matter in a golf greens can lead to unpredictability. So when they plug, they have to backfill it with sand in order to continue to dry things moving quickly through that through that sand based zone, right? They don't want it to linger there, and organic matter will mean nutrients and all kinds of stuff can linger in the root zone for a longer period of time. They don't want that. They want complete manipulation over that. However, when you're talking about a fairway, a fairway. Uh, you know, you've got to think you're looking at your aerial views, right? You've got playability because typically you get a little higher height of cut. So, you know, the issue of playability isn't as difficult to maintain. However, when you're looking out across it, you want to make sure you have the most uniform stand as possible. So you want to uh, eliminate as much localized dry spot as possible. Localized dry spot on a green can be damaging to the point of no return. You'll lose all your grass and then, you know, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars down the drain. With a fairway, you don't really have that much to lose, so you just plug it, collect your plugs, and go on about your day, and that will allow water to go down and hopefully uh, eliminate some of those hydrophobic areas that can occur when they dry out. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what type of lime and how much would you recommend to bring soil pH by one point? Jerry Bob Hayes, I would have to see a soil test. I cannot answer that. Let me tell you why. Because you may have a pH of 5.5, but you may have magnesium levels that are at 550 parts per million. And if I tell you to put down dolomitic lime, I'm doing you no good because that is made up of mainly magnesium. And that's going to harden off your soil to the point where grass isn't even going to want to grow in it anymore. So I have to see a soil test and figure out, do you have adequate magnesium levels? Do you have deficient magnesium levels? Do you have adequate calcium levels? Do you have inadequate calcium levels? And then that would determine how much lime you need to apply to bring up your soil pH by one point and what type of lime that is. And typically they will make that recommendation for you on the soil test. They'll say you need to apply a thousand pounds per thousand square feet of calcitic lime or probably not that high, but you know, you need to apply a hundred pounds of dolomitic lime per thousand square feet to bring your soil pH to one point. Uh, let's see. Will you be able to ship your carbon X to Idaho soon? Because I can't get the next product here yet. Inquiring minds want to know. Um, that is going to, uh, I can't say that yet. I'm not going to be able to say that. Um, I mean more like lignin chelation versus citric acid. Lignin is not really a chelation. Uh, lignin is just more of a stabilizer. So, and how do I phrase this? A stabilizer would be like a a delay. Um, uh, and well, I, lignin could be. So there's actually a humic component to lignin, um, and um, hum, humic acid in humate can be like a chelator. Um, so I just don't like to use the term lignin chelation because lignin isn't really a true chelator. Citric acid is a true chelator. Um, lignin isn't. It's just more of a way to prepare a solution to keep things in solution. I hope that helps. <clears throat> um, because it's it's a thick organic uh, acid liquid, right? And uh, and so it just it it just it's a it's basically like a surfactant is what is what lignin is. 
Oh, here we go. Get in the kids' bed. Thanks for all you do. Hey, thank you, Future Former. Hey, Grass Factor. How low, how low, low would it take for Humic to adjust my soil? How low, low would it take for Humic to adjust my soil? I don't know what you're asking, Chef, Chef 204. I do not understand. Could you ask it in a different way, please? Uh, neighbor noob tried to get it going and accomplish herbicide burn doing high temp app. Common Bermuda, is there anything you can do? I told him nitrogen, water, Milo. Thanks, boss. Corporate HQ, yeah, uh, exactly what you suggest. Apply fertilizer and um, uh, water it, water it, water it, and pray it comes back. Ridge Runner, what are you doing? If all the human race is collectively, race collectively is defined as humanity, is all the human called humanity? <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Ridge Runner. I'm glad you're here, sir. <laughs> uh, here we go. Yes, sir. Look good for the party. All right, come on. Let's keep going down here to the questions. As a homeowner, how do I go in about getting a pallet of carbon X and how much does a pallet cost? Chris Mickles, I would contact Alan Hain, the lawn care nut, and he will get you taken care of. Um, let's see. Is it benefit? And let me tell you why we have to do it like that. We have to do it like that because... Uh, at, at Carbon Earth, really, there's there's two guys that kind of run everything day to day. We've got a whole different set of team that handles everything in Calhoun, Kentucky. There's seven guys down there that run the plant and do all that fun stuff with shipping, receiving, packaging, uh, actually manufacturing, and all that good stuff. Uh, John and I try to handle a lot of the day to day, um, and I try to um, uh, work on you know things like marketing and handling all the all the uh, professional side of, of things like product development and, and sales to the professional side. John Borden tries to handle all like the minute day-to-day -day operations of keeping everything running, you know, calling and ordering spare parts, getting things changed and getting uh, contractors out there to make a change and all this. And so, you know, we ask, you know, Alan to, you know, say, hey, you know, listen, if a homeowner calls in and does and you know, is requesting this, can can you handle that? Because we don't have the time to be able to take it, take on much more than what we have right now. So I'd shoot him an email and be like, hey, man, how do I go about getting a pallet of carbon X? Because he will be able to help you out. Is it beneficial to put down half the seed, then aerate, then spread the rest of the seed, or just spread all seed after aeration? Matt Kaczynski, dude, I've tried it every which way imaginable. I've put it down, aerated on top of it, done it half and half. Does it? I can't say I've ever seen a result difference either way. Um, so I think whatever, I wouldn't overcomplicate it, just whatever's easiest for you. CCCC, you first. Um, let's see, <laughs> unsalted butter. <laughs> How often can I aerate my Bermuda that I'm trying to fill in? 48 inch pull behind. Uh, you can aerate it every week if you want. You're not going to hurt it. As long as you're peak uh, growing season, you're good to go. When would you core aerate in the fall or spring with Kentucky bluegrass? Last fall I did and I spread post seeds not knowing they germinate in fall. Um, I, you know, for a home lawn, I don't know. I just probably wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about aerating. Um, and part of your, I've seen, I've seen pictures of your yard. I would not worry about aerating at all. I mean, your, your, your yard looks fine. If, if you want to do something, you know, you can get out there, get, you spray a little air, spray a little, um, uh, what is it? Uh, some, some baby shampoo on it. I mean, and you, know, you just don't have the type of, of hardcore, um, uh, sports turf taking place on, on your lawn to probably, probably need all of that. So I'd say you're good to go. Matt, does humic fix clay soil? No, not specifically, but in part, as part of a program, can it? Yes, but it's all about how you use it to fix clay soil, right? So if you're dealing with a high pH clay soil and you come in and you make an application of something extremely acidic to flush or to react out the carbonates out of the soil, then humic can have a flocculating effect on clay soil. Does it necessarily fix it? No, but it can improve infiltration throughout it. I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see here. Have you ever had any luck with Zorja seed? I'm not. Van Devine, Van Devine Lawn Service, man, I had, I had a job on the line to do um, a Zorja seed, but I, it never, we were never able to make, make it happen. So no, I never got to, to seed Zorja grass. And, um, and I really wish I did. I've seen some people have great success with it. I've heard other people say no. Um, so I have not, though. I do not have the experience. If you do, tell me about it. I'd love to learn. 
Matt, what does molasses do to turf? And if so, what rate? Thanks again. Corporate HQ, pretty simple. It's a simple sugar. It doesn't really do a whole lot for turf other than supply calcium and sulfur, right? Because if you look at the makeup of molasses, it's got sugar, a little bit of calcium, a little bit of sulfur. So what is it going to do for turf? It's going to supply some calcium and some sulfur. However, you apply simple sugars to the soil, it's going to act as an immediate, quick, supercharged food source for any kind of live bacteria or biology or fungi or microbes in the soil. So it can get those stimulating faster. Um, so there you go. And in the event you have excessive organic material in your soil, increased microbial activity will increase the mineralization rate of your organic matter rich soil. What rate? A pint per acre. Four weeks old sod. Water and feeding schedule advice can be shortened, like one and a half in top dress. Sod is tiff tough. Yeah, you can. As far as if it's four weeks old, what I would do is I would go ahead and turn, mm, I would probably cut it back to twice a week, something like that. And I would still continue feeding it maybe every other week. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah, at about a quarter pound of in per application. And you can shorten that to, yeah, one and a half is going to be a fine high to cut. However, I would probably be mowing that every other day, something like that. And yes, you could top dress, top dress with sand though, if you do top dress. Uh, but as far as a watering schedule, yeah, I would begin to shock it right now. Let it get a little dry and then give it plenty of water to recover. Hello, Matt. Hello, Brett Schmidt. Recommend an effective approach for Johnson grass to turf type tall fescue. I want to say a claim Phenoxapop is labeled for Johnson grass to turf type tall fescue. I would look there. Kate Carter says, I think I have some compaction issues with my dicks or chopper mower. Will coloration fix this this fall? How does the liquid aeration work? I can't seem to wrap my head around it. Cade Carter, I did a video about it. I need to go back and redo that video because as you go through time, you learn a little bit more. And so a little bit with the liquid aeration, you've got lignans in the humans and in uh, that come lignans and lipids from the human portion of the linardite coal where you extract your humic acid. When you put KOH into it, saponification takes place, which can have like a surfactant-like, soil surfactant-type quality to it. And so uh, uh, with that and leaving it in that high pH state, it acts kind of like a, almost like a, like a liquid soap to ha help things move into the soil really quickly. Um, so... Yeah, that's how that would work. If you've got a Dixie Chopper, though, and you've got compaction issues because of that Dixie Chopper, um, core aeration, it may not just outright fix it, but that may be a good start towards fixing it. Um, because a Dixie Chopper is a heavy, heavy mower, man. That's a heavy mower. So if it were me, yeah, definitely. I'd get out there and I'd plug the fire out of it. Uh, thank you for tuning in, Robert Butler. I appreciate that. Matt Davis said, I use copper fungicide on pine trees. It was labeled for lawn use. I would think it would kill soil microbes. What do you think? Yeah, Matt Davis, it probably would. Uh, but unfortunately, that's just kind of what happens when you have to do that. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, when you're applying you know, straight copper to the soil, I mean, that's not going to be good probably for uh, for all that stuff. Matt, Carbon X for Screaming Green. Used green earlier this year before X. Uh, yeah, I've, I've done lots of videos on it, S SV Dave. So it's completely different. It's a blended product, um, and they blend, like, I don't know, six different ingredients into the bag. Um, we put, like, six different ingredients into the bag, but we only do it in two prills where they do it in, like, six. So a little different. They use biosolids. We don't. Um, so just, just similar but different. Uh, let's see here. What is going on, Lushy? Stop it, Lushy! S Lushy, stop it! It is getting hot. Um, I <laughs> dropped the mic. <laughs> Terry Finch says, got some spurge of chamber bitter. Smoke them once with atrazine. Gotta hit them again, but is there a cultural practice to help get rid of them? Uh, no, but you can apply isoxabin, also known as gallery, and it will help keep them at bay. Is it possible to get ducky bluegrass to take over a cool season mixed lawn? What can be done to encourage it? Or do I have to burn it down? Yeah, you're probably not going to be able to get it to take over everything. I just, I don't, 
I don't I don't think you'll be able to do that. I just don't think so. I have Kikuyu in heavy clay. How would you fart it? Oh man, I have no idea. Chef 204, I have no idea. Kikuyu in heavy clay. How would you fart it? Uh I would yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not even gonna pretend to know. That's a curveball. You win, sir. Uh, Chris Broussard, any tip for keeping rabbits from eating my beautiful turf type tall fescue? at ball patches now. If he was enough to compete with down, I have rabbit issues. I don't know. I think John Perry was out there putting some hot sauce or something on his yard for it. Is there any issue with tank mixing tenacity with sedge hammer? Going after crabgrass and a few sedges? No, not at all. Great tank mix, Cade Carter. Ducati Clow! Uh, I'm not going to answer that, SV Dave. Um, Robert Butler, my lawn is so incredibly thick, I think it's too thick from overseeding yearly. I could swear the color is suffering because of it now. Too much competition may be possible. Absolutely possible, Robert Butler. I see it all the time. All the time. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, can you use tenacity before laying centipede sod or wait till it's rooted or best options? I believe you can lay it before you can put it down before laying centipede sod without any issues. I wouldn't worry about that. Moving up to Knox to take on the turf and maintenance roles for UT gardens. Woo! Drew Bogert. Good for you, sir. Congratulations, man. Hey, when you get up there, call me and uh, yeah, we'll go. We'll go do some neat stuff. We'll go do some tour. I've I've uh, I've spent uh, a lot of time at the at the UT Gardens, if you could imagine. The guys in the Discord make me feel short already. <laughs> that is funny. Ah, uh, yes, welcome. Are you in IT? Why here? While we're doing that, let me go ahead and and do that. Uh, how far am I from the bottom? I'm probably pretty far from the bottom. I think so. Uh, real quick, for those of you who are, I'm going to keep going here, guys. I'm, I'm not going to end, end it short today. We're going to keep right on rocking and rolling through this thing. For those of you that are wondering how to get a hold of me outside of the typical lawn channel forums, um, I do exist. And probably the easiest way to get a hold of me would be at thelawndiscord.com. Over at thelongdiscord.com, it's a group of middle-aged men that are trying to deal with the reality of life and everything that has happened to them since they graduated from high school. That's a terrible way to put that. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry to the. I'm sorry to the guys in the Discord. I'm really sorry. Um, or you can send me an email at thegrassfactor at gmail.com. You can find me on Instagram at thegrassfactor. You can also find me on the Lawn Forum. I don't participate a whole lot over there, but I am over there. I lurk at the grass factor on the lawn forum. But for real, if you've never been, you should check it out over at the lawn It's a good time. It's a good time. And if you have it, please hit the subscribe button. That's what lets me know to keep doing this because, um, if I don't have enough subscribers, apparently that means, um, the content I produce is not, is not accurate. According to one person last week, I'm lacking in subscribers because my content is inaccurate. Eugh. We're going to go back. To this screen. There we go. We're back. We're back. Uh, let's see here. Matt, how can I make it rain in Alabama? Buddy, I do not know, AV guy. I am sorry. I am sorry. Poa Constrictor worked great for me this year on Poa here in North Carolina. Gene, the kind of the club, getting it done. Um, I'm not a full-time welder, but I do a lot of welding and tool and die. What's your interest in welding? I just enjoy it, Ben Steele. Um, I'm not a great welder by any means. I actually learned on YouTube, and uh, I can get down with a MIG, but I wish I was a TIG welder because Jody from Welding Tips and Trips is like an, a hero to me. Where is Ryan Knorr? Somebody get Ryan Knorr on over here. That's what I'm saying. When will we see 818 available to DIY? Uh, we will be able to see it here soon. I'm going to say two weeks, something like that. One week, maybe. I don't know. Thoughts on Let's Go 3-Way Fescue Blend. $75 for its more expensive 3-Way Blend, such as Black Beauty, GCI, etc. Will both perform equally if the soil is right? Uh, potentially, it all depends on where you're located. Oh, look at this. Ryan is here. What are you doing, Ryan? Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. I'm glad you're here, buddy. Um, thoughts on Let's Go 3-Way uh, versus Black Beauty, GCI, etc. Okay, so this is what I recommend you do, and I can say this, uh, is... When you get a label, um, when you look at a seed label, I did a video about this. What you want to look for is um, the most important part 
isn't necessarily just the part that says weed seeds or noxious weeds. Noxious weeds can be anything. I mean, there are very specific noxious weeds that are going to be like ragweed, pigweed. Um, it's the other crop. As long as the bag of seed has less than 5% other crop, you do not have to list what that other crop is. That 5% seed and other crop may be all POA annua. You don't know. So what you want to do when you pick out your seed is make sure that other crop is 0.0%. Not 0.1, not 0.01, not 0.20, but 0.0% other crop is what you're looking for. So whether you're choosing Black Beauty or, or Let's Go 3-Way, make sure other crop is 0%. I can say, I know, uh, without a doubt, the GCI seed has 0% other crop. So that is where I would go because I do not think the Let's Go 3-Way blend or Black Beauty has 0% other crop. Uh, Someone commented on a video, I need to decide if I talk like Paul, Paul Outlaw or Ryan Knorr. <laughs> I've applied three apps of Dismiss for yellow nutsedge in my Bermuda. The nutsedge is still growing back in some sections. What gives? I don't know, man. So this is typically why I do three blanket applications 30 days apart. That is the best way to get rid of it if you're going to use Dismiss. Now that we're this late in the season, I would switch modes of actions. I would go for sure a sulfonyl urea, either house if you're on, uh, Flaza Sulfuron, Katana, uh, Trifloxy Sulfuron, Monument, Sulfur Sulfuron, Certainty, Amazo Sulfuron, Solero, um, one of those. Let's see, can you speak uh, some to silica and how to incorporate it into treatments for grass that doesn't seem to have much rigidity? Weekly, monthly, low rates okay, water and in. JH, I don't have a ton of experience with this. I would, I would practice with it, and so this is how I would start is in periods of time where you seem to have you seem to be struggling because of a lack of rigidity make just a single application give it a couple weeks and if you decide you need to go harder make it make another application what you don't want to do is get out there and slam it and then uh you run into something where the grass just becomes so gnarled and and rigid that it's it it, it becomes actually unsightly so ease into it ease into it i would probably start at bi-weekly applications and uh and then and then give it some time give it some time uh gravy lookout best way to feed it when tips uh start to dip so what i would do is i would go balance gravy i would go uh uh i would take the ratio into effect and it would be one part nitrogen to one part potassium so like an 818 to, to plug what I do, or a 10010 or a 20020, one to one into potassium to aid in that recovery. What options do I have to deal with Spurge and Bermuda aside from hand pulling? There are tons of them. Um, any three way herbicide will work, um, any four way herbicide will work. Um, you could do uh, Syncor. You could do lots of sulfonylureas, metsulfuron, methyl, fluoroxapyr. It'll ding Bermuda pretty good, but that'll work. Um, you could do Monument. Um, yeah, man, there's a ton of options out there. Uh, probably the cheapest, easiest thing to do would be metsulfuron, methyl. Will you be able to ship carbon X to Idaho next season? I, I answered that, Marshall. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, when should I not fertilize my neighbor's Bermuda in the fall? What? I don't understand what you're asking, Gene DeClo. I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're saying. My soil test costs for one and a half tons of lime per acre. Okay. Uh, more than 50 pounds per thousand to correct a pH of 5.2. Should I apply it all at once? No, I would break it up into like four applications. I wouldn't apply any more than 50 pounds per thousand square feet at one time. Matt, heavy clay soil. How can I fix it? Um, <laughs> I need to see a soil test before I do it. Just because you have clay soil doesn't mean you have bad soil. Clay soil is actually a good thing because it hangs on to nutrients so, 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 so well. So clay soil can be a good thing. It's how do you improve the tilt of the clay soil. And in order to be able to improve the tilt, you have to look at what the, the composition of your clay to be able to make the right amendments to make sure you have the least amount of resistance on your plants as possible. Uh, let's see here. Kill the crabgrass. Uh, will be approved. Whoo, man, this chat is going tonight, y'all. Look at this. 
Does the baby shampoo help hydrophobic sandy soil break up surface tension and allow water to absorb more better? Uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. I had to read it twice, but yes. Um, what would be a good cool season program with X Green Carbon X? Why would you use one over the other? Um, so you don't necessarily have to. You can use one or the other. Um, but probably the the easiest thing uh, to do would be like when you need that showpiece going into the winter. John, just send me an email. I can get into this. But you know, like my very last application of the year, if it were me, would 100% be Carbon X. My first application of the year would 100% be Carbon X. Any anything from February through um, um, October time frame that I could fit in with with X Green. Uh, but of course, we got X Start coming up, so that would kind of move into like somewhere in September, late late August time frame. So trying to build out a whole program here man come on john i'm getting there matt can i mail you some grass clippings i just want you to have them yes absolutely i will wear them or i will i'll show everybody right here on the live stream what am i doing hey, can i do, I do i look i look a little deficient of light in here let me let me rearrange that i think that i think that may be a little better does that look all right i think it looks all right Hey, man, I sent you an email the other day. I haven't heard back from you. Round three is starting, and I need some fertilizer. Stan Watkins, send me an email at mattm at carbonearth.co. Mattm at carbonearth.co. Um, if you sent me an email the other day and it went to the grassfactor at gmail.com, I'm way behind on those emails, and uh, I do not, I have not seen it, Stan. I do not recognize your name, so I have not seen it. Um, and if you are, uh, Stan, if you are a lawn care professional and you are trying to order Carbon X, uh, online, uh, or through email, um, please do so through the website. So that way, um, it goes directly to me and, and it goes to in such a way where I'm able to get to it first. And if you're looking at how to do that, you go to where to buy Carbon or, uh, Carbon X on the website. Let's see. I live in North Houston and have St. Augustine as well as Bermuda. Is it? It is a young yard, two years after sod. Since I have two alpha grasses, do you have any tips to get rid of the Bermuda? Um, yes, if you want to get rid of St. Augustine, um, easy. Spray quinclorac would be the easiest thing to do. If you want to get rid of the Bermuda grass, get ready because you are in for a world of hurt. But... You will have to make applications of Prograss at the Fumisay and applications of uh, Atrazine. And in doing so, you may end up killing your St. Augustine as well as your Bermuda grass, but that's going to be your best chance of success. Who is this John Teague? Unnecessary. I don't need no Uber comment. <laughs> uh let's see here hey bro should i do an app of air eight before i put down one inch of sand down next week or maybe any other next product uh yeah if you got an inch of sand going down next week go heavy with rgs wham it wham it with the rgs how long would i have to apply humic to affect my clay soil again it depends chef 204 i love you brother and i see you keep asking this questions but it all depends on your soil test. If you send me a soil test, I can tell you exactly all of that. I can't just give it to you randomly over here because how that may, it may take two months on your soil type and it may take 10 months on another soil type. So I have to see a soil test. I'm all about that CH, the CHO, <laughs> CHNO. It's just like wood. Hey, Matt, are you coming to the GI this year? And if so, are you going to have a booth about Carbon X? Yes, Carbon Earth Company will be at the GIE this year. The Lawn Whisperer is here. So, I'll get fun. Sweet. I need it in a bad way. Detach and narrate. There we go. Uh, hey, Matt, got Pythium Blight on new 50-50 Kentucky Bluegrass Rye Turf. From it sitting in standing water when it was 95 degrees, what is my best bet to limit the damage where, where it is currently and stop it? Um, so that would be Mephinoxum, also known as Subdue Max. You can get uh, an off-brand called Mephinox, Mephinoxum 2AQ um, by Qualipro, um, and it works extremely well. All right, Gary Evans, uh, Gavins, uh, Gary Evans, I appreciate you tuning in, sir. 
Uh, Matt, regarding dry spots caused by rocks, do the rocks work their way toward the surface over time? Maybe, sometimes, not necessarily. It can go either way. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do until finally when you dig it out. So I don't want to give you some sort of false narrative and false sense of security that, yeah, it's going to work its way to the surface. That may not ever happen, as a matter of fact. Centipedes is in the house chat. Trey, what's going on, sir? Uh, no such thing as too thick in a fine fescue lawn. That's what I'm talking about. How do you know what rate to overseed to prevent negative effects of, of competition? Uh, you overseed at the rate suggested by the, the, the cultivar of fescue you're seeding. So this is where you have your label. You look at the varieties you have. You hop on Google, look up those, and you will see best seed success uh, recommendations with those all over the uh, geneticist website, whoever genetically developed that seed. Um, Matt, best lawn spray for mosquitoes. I would go about it more than one way MSG lawn care. So I would go a pyrethroid um, and probably an insect growth regulator like Nylar is one of the ones uh, that we used to go with. So yeah, I would go with that. Um, did I miss the roll call? Yes, sir, you did. What's up, real centipede? <laughs> uh, I haven't hit a midlife crisis yet. Alabama must have a bad year of foosball. Otherwise, no rain. Woo! Chain link fence. Been there, done that. Uh, up until this year, I thought overseeding every year was a good thing. It's almost hard to walk through. Would heavy core writing help thin it out a little bit? Potentially, yes, absolutely. Uh, been using propiconazole 14.3 in quadrus azoxy 22%. Pete, hey man, we were talking about seed earlier because somebody we were talking about that other crop section of the seed, and we were talking about how we are the the one seed I know for sure has zero percent other crop is uh, your your GCI turf seed, and uh, we have we have talked about that a lot. But yeah, Pete has zero percent other crop in his GCI turf select. I like that name. I just completely made up there, Pete. <laughs> A heavy core aeration will thin it out. And listen, it's not always a bad thing to overseed. That's not what I'm saying is overseeding is a bad thing. What I'm saying is pay attention to the rates at which you overseed. Because you renovate the lawn, don't don't overseed at 10 pounds per thousand. Overseed, if if you got if it's thick enough that it's hard to work walk through, overseed it at three pounds per thousand. Overseed it at two pounds per thousand. Something like that. Back it down. Quadrus azoxy 22% is not labeled for turf. Um, I've been using one ounce of each per thousand square feet. Is that sufficient to prevent or is that too low of a rate? Thank you as always. Chris Morton, that is over legal limit. <laughs> okay, first, Quadrus azoxy is not labeled for turf grass. So stop, stop spraying that one. Um, then uh, one ounce per thousand of, of azoxy 22% is over label rate. Max label rate per uh, app there is going to be uh, 0.75 ounces per thousand. So what you did, yeah, that was a sufficient rate, but a little bit too high on your azoxy. Yeah, I'd back that down to 0.75. And um, I would, I think you can go to Chemical Warehouse and get an azoxy 22% that does have a turf label. That's uh, that's in that same price range as Quadrus. Uh, the GCI Bluegrass, that's what I'm talking about. Try aluminum TIG welding. You'll never want to do it again. <laughs> How, hey, Mitch B66, how are our balls going, going to do this year? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to win the national championship. That is blind um, faith. And, and let me tell you, I'm, I'm, there is nothing more painful than being a volunteer fan. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead. I'm hopping on the train right now. We're, we're, Pruitt is going to take us right, right to the national championship. And i tell you who our leading receiver is going to be. And it's going to be Jawan Jennings. And he's going to catch Hail Marys every game. Woof, woof. The dog himself. Late start on Bermuda, overgrown with crab. Soil is great. What is my next step before fall pre-emergence? Spray out that crabgrass and feed the Bermuda back to life. Um, I would probably use uh, Tenacity or Pilex to spray it out. What do you think about Melorganite? I, I did a really, really long video about Melorganite, and it's called Melorganite, the Science, Successes and Failures. And I don't really want to, hold, I want to get into it, but yeah, it's out there. Um, all this talk about three way and four ways making me hungry. <laughs> Certainty plus MSM works most or better. Dismiss plus MSM, but little damage. Maybe in this mix, add a little 2,4-D as well. Probably not. I would just do Certainty plus MSM because 
Certainty plus MSM is going to catch just about the same amount that uh, adding a little bit of 2,4-D in. And like, I can't see where you're going to get any added benefit out of that 2,4-D that you wouldn't get out of naturally have running Certainty and MSM. Finding melting out here in my Kentucky Bluegrass Lawn Tree with Azox. Is there enough K and Air 8 to help with the battle? Uh, probably not. Uh, so it's 5% K and at 10... 10 pounds times 0 0.05. So, you know, in a gallon, you've got about a half a pound of um, 10 times 0 0.05. You got about a half pound in a gallon. So to really get down like an effective rate of K, you would have to apply air rate at one gallon per thousand square feet. So I would not use that as a K source. I would go get a K source like SOP, just a bag of it, 0, 0, 0050 and put it down. Um, Let's see here. Oh, this is interesting. Um, okay, that's unimportant. Uh, what to do about mole in mulch bed and now burring into edge of grass? Will this be harmful to our lawn? Uh, no, it, it won't. Um, just make sure you don't have... have um, um, Mole traps. There you go. There you go. Past two years, I have air raid and overseeded with turf type tall fescue, and the yard is finally looking pretty damn good. What should I do this fall? Pre emergent, just dump the nitrogen, still overseed and air raid. Um, it, it really it's up to you, Eric. So if you've got it there, I would I would probably continue to do what you're doing. I, so I would I'd overseed again. I would just back your rates down if it's nice and thick enough for you. And then if you get a little later into it, you know maybe um uh put you a little pre emergent down if you need to. Uh, if you're going to dump the nitrogen, there's a process called the fall nitrogen blitz that's very popular. And I think that came from like up in the Indiana region. Where's G-Man who could tell us about that? Um, and I want to say like uh, Michael Woods and the Asian turf grass and Pace Turf all had something to do with that stuff too. So, But you can. You can do the fall nitrogen blitz. Uh, but yeah, I would still seed. I would just back my rates down. If you glyphosate a yard to renovate, what damage do you do to the soil? And what advice would you give to help the soil recover for growth? for healthy growth prior to, during, or after reseeding. So the best thing you can do when you glyphosate a yard is to get something growing on it as quickly as possible. Because exposed soil to the environment is the worst thing you can do for a soil. Exposed soil is unprotected. You lose everything in it relatively quickly. So the best thing you can do is hurry up and get something new growing on it. Um, yeah, and I did a whole video that kind of talked about what happened to bacteria levels and stuff in the, in the lawn. Uh, how long does it take you to see results from humic acid? Thanks, <laughs> roll tax it, right, Jimenez. I almost read that out with pride. Um, it depends on what you're using it for. I'd have to look at your soil tests and, and, you know, guys, guys, I, when, when we talk about humic acid, like, yes, like that's a humic acid is a great tool, but it's a tool in the toolbox. So I need a little bit more information than just something simple. Like how long until I see results from humic acid? I don't know. What are your carbonate levels in your soil? It, depending on your carbonate levels in your soil, and you say they're extremely low, well, it might be able to have some pretty positive flocculating effects pretty quickly. Or, uh, you know, what it may say is that you actually don't need humic acid. You need more calcium than anything. So I, I just can't answer that without a whole lot more information. What's up, Yardman LLC? Uh, how can we make the Discord sound less depressing? I don't know. It just is depressing. I'm kidding. I have a yellow Kentucky bluegrass lawn. It's literally yellow. I've applied two apps of pre with prodiamine with biosolids and a merit app with biosolids, so plenty of iron. Where everybody see this fall and run a fungicide next year? Okay, so Shane, probably what I would do is, since you're in Nebraska, I'm going to say you've got high pH. What I would do is I would get out there with some ammonium sulfate, 2100, and apply it to that yard. And I would say that it will pull around pretty quickly. Um, and if it doesn't green up to uh, ammonium sulfate, then we know it's something bigger at hand. Just because it's it's chlorotic and it's yellow doesn't mean it's deficient in iron. There could be an underlying issue like high pH. What happens when you go over the yearly rate for a pre-emergent like prodiamine? You 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 waste money. Is would be the big thing. Um, improve it. We trust. Hey, that's good to hear, Jay, and I'm glad to hear that. Whatever side is best to kill Virginia creeper is choking out my flower beds and trees. Um, there's lots of stuff you can use to kill out Virginia creeper. Uh, Triclopyr and fluoroxapyr is probably the easiest thing to do. 
Um, hang on, I'm gonna go back up here. I'm almost caught up to the bottom of the of the chat. Uh, bro, you think it's tough being a Vols fan? Have you paid attention to my revs the past few years? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Best temperature to apply Killex. Watch one of your videos today and never thought about temperature. I don't know what Killex is, JJ White, so I'm not going to be able to answer that. Could you give me an active ingredient and I'll tell you what uh, what temperature that is? How do you feel about the long hair nut saying Purdue is the elite school for turf grass science in his podcast? He didn't even acknowledge UT. So this is what's what's funny is back when when I was in school, Purdue was the elite school for turf science. But what has happened over the course of the last few years is thanks to Jim Brosnan and and uh, uh, Sorokin and uh, Greg Breeden and all these guys that have started coming up, you know, UT is starting to look a little more robust. And I think I think Allen is a little behind the times on what's happening with turf science in school right now. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I've been using aerate all season on my turf type 12 fescue. Should I mechanically aerate this fall? If you've been running aerate on, I don't, I don't know. I can't answer that, man. That almost you have to, you have to take a step back and and take think about it from my perspective. You just told me you ran a liquid aeration product all year, and now you're asking me if you should mechanically aerate this fall. I don't know why. Why do you feel the need to mechanically aerate this fall? Do you feel like you're not getting good enough results? If you feel like you're not getting good enough results, then do it. If you feel like you've got good results and you're wondering, should I just get out there and sweat sweat labor through it? Then don't do it. You know, it's it's totally up to you, man. I don't know. I need more information other than I applied this product. Now do I do this? Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's got a great turf school too. That's right. What do you think about K fight? Now this is a great one. Potassium phosphite. Phosphite um, is a good product because it is very specific in being a nutrient that once in the plant can kind of turn into like a phosphorus type deal, but it has a good job of controlling pythium. It does not control all diseases, but it does control pythium. And more importantly, it actually prevents pythium. So you may not get a lot of good, you know, quote unquote, post-emergent effect on your Pythium, but it may help prevent your Pythium. Uh, let's see here. I just want the Bermuda to flop. <laughs> uh, need to home a 31 at the shop. Oh, there you go. How often do you complete, or do you perform a complete flush of your spray tank? At least once a month, at least once a month. Anytime, though, really, when you transition from one product to the other, you should really do it. Just started my lawn renovation, did three amps of Roundup, and started to do a John Perry Control Burn. How long does it take for the grass to die down to the crown? Um, if you did three amps of Roundup, it should be dead down to the crown. I mean, yeah, I mean, that should be... That should be like super dead. I don't know what rate of Roundup you did, but if you sprayed three three apps of Roundup and it's not dead down to the crown, something's wrong. Uh, yes, you did, Corporate HQ. You missed it. Um, I don't know what the time frame was, but it's um, yes, it provides calcium sulfur, but it's it's also just a really simple sugar that is going to stimulate microbiology really, really, really quickly to help break down any excessive organic material buildup you may have in the top layer of your soil. Um, so, and the rate of that would be 16 ounces to the acre. I think I put my first stakes too close to my four foot Avervitas. Do I need to see if I can find them and put it two foot out like the instructions say? I put them about one foot from the trunk. You'll be fine, Trent. You'll be good. Do I have to dig out necrotic ring spot or can fungicide get rid of it? Oh, that's a good question. Fungicide should work, and we we'll talked about it earlier. I'm not a super big expert on the chronic ring spot. I would try and grow it in first and use something like propiconazole to keep it away. All right, everybody, that's going to get it for tonight. For those of you that are looking to get a hold of me outside of the show, either the show before the show or the show after the show, you can find me at thelawndiscord.com. You can also send me an email at thegrassfactor at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram at thegrassfactor or hiding somewhere in the background at the Lawn Forum where I can be contacted at thegrassfactor. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. I really appreciate it. I had an awesome, awesome time. And for those of you, uh, yeah, I don't know. Big thank you to everybody for tuning in. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, this button lets me know to keep going. And uh, yeah, hey, where am I? I think that's got it. All right, everybody, y'all take it easy.
Have a good one.